Today we're doing a full walkthrough on the DJI Fly best settings to use on the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Let's get straight into it. So when you first see this screen, it's going to be quite daunting, especially for a beginner, what all the settings and icons mean. So hopefully this video will help you out. First, let's look in the bottom left hand corner. This is where your map is. It's going to be the map of your current location. But what I like to do is click on the bottom right hand corner and change this to the altitude indicator. This is then going to show the pitch and orientation of your drone, very important. So I recommend changing it to the attitude indicator and keeping it like that. Okay, camera settings, camera and FPS. So this films up to 4K 60. In 4K 24, 25 and 30, this is going to be the HQ. This is what DJI call the HDR mode. In 48, 50 and 60, this won't be in HDR, but 4K 60 is fantastic for slowing any footage down. Now you can also change to 2.7K and 1080p. In 2.7K, this is the same frame rate, but it's not HDR. This is 24 up to 60. 1080p as well, up to 60 FPS in this menu. You can do slow mo in 1080p, up to 120 FPS. So just to the right hand side, you'll see EV. This is your exposure value. Now, as you slide this up to the plus areas, it will then get a brighter image. And when it goes negative, so as you slide to the left, it will be a darker image. Without ND filters in the location you're in, you need to set this accordingly. I have it on minus 0.3 or minus 0.7. And then if we click the auto button, this will now change into pro settings. These are fantastic for manual control, but I use these all the time with ND filters. So you'll see here it's completely blown out. So what you want to do is have your ISO as low as possible. So ISO 100 and your shutter speed should be double what your frame rate is. However, without ND filters, I'm going to have to put the shutter speed to about one over 500. You can see now the MM at the bottom, it's just around about zero. That's what you want to aim for. But ND filters, I'll do a full video on as soon as they're available. And you'll see here, you can also change the white balance. So you can keep this on auto if you wish, or by selecting the auto button at the top, you can change the Kelvins. So around Around about 5,100 to 200 kelvins looks the best on this drone but if you're not comfortable at doing this you can just keep that at auto and this is also the, this menu is like a quick access menu to change all your settings of note you only get this menu in pro settings if you keep it on auto you won't get this little menu all you'll get simply in auto is just the option to change the exposure value so pro settings are awesome as soon as you've got ND filters. Back to the main screen, this button here is going to change the camera to vertical mode. So you'll see on the promotions, you can shoot in both landscape and vertical. This is how you do it. And I'm having so much fun in vertical mode, especially on Instagram Reels. You can zoom in up to two times in 4K by just selecting this button, or you can smoothly zoom in on the zoom wheel on the new RC controller, or if you've got the old controller by pressing the FN button and then using that gimbal wheel, this will smoothly zoom in. In 2.7K, you can zoom up to three times zoom and in 1080p up to four times zoom. Just bear in mind that these are all digital zooms. So as soon as you zoom in, it's not going to be fantastic quality. You can also click here and change from autofocus to manual focus or macro. It is a small sensor, so there's not a massive amount of separation, but you do get some. So have a play around with that. That's pretty fun to do. So in the top right hand corner now, let's get straight into the main settings. Under safety, a main feature of this Mini 3 Pro is the obstacle avoidance sensors. So you have bypass, brake and off. Bypass, what that does is that will go around the obstacle and continue either tracking you or flying in its path. Brake will simply just stop before the obstacle and hover in place and won't continue. And then off is basically if you want to be flying in an area or where there's obstacles like in small gaps. So if you're flying through something, then turn them off. But as is risky. Now disable sideways flight because there isn't any side sensors on this drone this will then disable you being able to fly sideways so for that I turn that off because I want to be able to fly sideways but just be careful because there's no sensors on there. Always keep the display radar map on that will show you any obstacles on the screen coming up. 
This is where you can change your max altitude, distance and return to home altitude and make sure you follow me on Instagram for some behind the scenes footage as well. So you return to home altitude, you want to have that set to be higher than the tallest or building or object in the area that you're in just in case you lose disconnect. Don't have it set to about 20 meters and then think oh shit there's a massive building just in front of me it's going to go hurtling to that. Have it set higher than the biggest or tallest object in your area. Update home point is very important, especially if you're on the move, like on a bike or something. Now it's important on the new RC as well. You need to enable to make sure that you have 3G, 4G or 5G connection to your phone or a Wi-Fi connection before you go out and fly. Otherwise, you won't be able to update your home point because you won't have a signal. So this is super important. If you use the old N1 controller and it's connected to your phone, then you're probably gonna have a signal already through your phone. If not, and you're using the new RC, new DJI RC, make sure that you are connected to your phone's hotspots before going out and flying. If you are going to be able to need to update your home point, so if you're on a bike, if you're going uh, tracking yourself in a car or something, you need to update that home point regularly super important calibrations on the drone i've not had to do at all if you get prompted that's where they are unlock geo zone i'm going to do a full video on how to unlock geo zones and then find my drone if you crash if you lose it click on here and it will display a map and then from this map you can then basically be tracked to where that drone is and it can start flashing and beeping hopefully that never happens to you but if you, that happens this is where it's going to be if it runs out of battery it'll show its last point advanced safety settings super important have your signal lost to return to home so if it loses signal it disconnects something goes wrong it will come back to you don't have it set to descend i've never ever once had it set to descend hover is only if you're going to be flying maybe really far away and if you disconnect you want to be able to hover in place and then go and retrieve it but for me have it return to home all the time okay under control this is where you can change your units so do you want it miles per hour do you want it kilometers hour do you want it meters per second you can select that there Subject scanning, this will basically scan for every single object on the, on the screen and then see do you want to track them or not. It's super distracting, have that off. Gimbal mode, if you want FPV mode or follow mode, this is where you would change that. For the majority of the time, I keep it on follow mode, but FPV mode is fun. Advanced gimbal settings. Okay, so the pitch speed of the gimbal. I have turned mine right down. So copy and paste these if you wish for my normal sports and cine mode settings. Now I do change them as I get more used to the drone I might increase the speeds, but the gimbal, because it pitches to such a high amount, I've turned my speed of that gimbal right down. I prefer it to be smoother. Gimbal calibration, this is if your horizon is off. Now on a smooth surface, you can select auto, but if you're in the air, you can just do manual calibrations and this is how you would then adjust it by the plus or minus horizontal. So if you've got a wonky horizontal line, that's how you change it. Stay with me guys, we're nearly there. I need a coffee or a beer, coming soon. <laughs> right, button customization. So here you've got C1 and C2 on the new controller. So you can select to have these custom buttons. So I have mine set to switch in between portrait and landscape. And the other one, I'll have it to recenter that gimbal. There isn't a lot of different options at the moment. Hopefully they add more as time goes on. Where it says advanced, you can just keep these the same. Don't change any of that. I'll do a full video on what all this means in the future, but leave that as it is. Okay, camera. We're now into the juicy stuff. So format, MP4, uh, MOV, depending on which one you want. And then color, normal or D cine like So we've just had a recent update now in D cine like So in normal, this is going to basically be the normal color profile. Now for 70% of you, this is going to be enough. The drone does everything. The color of this is excellent. D cine like is a flat color profile, but we've now just got a firmware update, which is 10 bit D cine like Now for anybody who is in the Oh, that is absolutely awesome news and decently like allows you then to have more control in the editing have more control with the shadows and the highlights it's just going to look better if you know how to do color grading and color editing i will do a video showing you how i do mine but for majority of people you can just keep this in normal especially for beginners so video subtitles i have that turned off and then these i'm just going to fly through so histogram if you want that on this is where your histogram your peaking and your exposure warnings are you can have all these turned on but i sometimes find that it gets quite cluttered on the screen so only have maybe one or two of those on 
Now, grid lines. When you're doing your filming, you want to have it all framed nicely. So I have the middle one turned on all the time. This allows then a rule of thirds to be seen. This is without any grid lines now, but then when you turn the grid line on, you can see these little boxes in the, in the frame. These are the rule of thirds. So when I'm flying, I have everything nicely framed. I also can add these two little crosshair things on here, and this will allow me if I'm doing parallaxes or I'm, or I'm actually flying towards a a, like a subject or a tower, then that is perfectly positioned. So grid lines are super important. Turn the middle one on, the rule of thirds, keep it on all the time and you'll get used to it. We talked about white balance before and your SD card, have a big SD card. I use the SanDisk Extreme U3, I'll link it in the description below. And this will show you how much storage you've got and then the cached when recording. So it stores the cached recordings onto your actual drone controller as well, or your phone. So transmission, keep this on dual band. The signal on here is awesome. So you don't need to be selecting 2.4 or 5.8 anymore. Just keep it on dual band and you won't have any issues. And then if you don't see any prompts for aircraft firmware, you can click here, check for updates under firmware. Once connected to Wi-Fi or data, it will update. Back onto the home screen, you can see we can pitch the gimbal up and down now, 60 degrees. This is absolutely incredible. Allows so many different creative opportunities. Now in the top corner here, you can see your pre-flight check menu. This just gives you a quick access to that return to home altitude, the max altitude distance, shows you your storage locations. It's really good on the fly just to be able to click that and see everything. You've also got your battery indicator. When the, bat when the drone's in the air, you'll see how much battery life you've got. So keep an eye that all the time and then your signals your satellites it's all going to be identified here so if you're getting quite stuttery footage it's probably because you're losing bars of signal and then always keep an identification on that gps satellites don't set off until it's actually in white now let's just look at that red marker here so in sports mode your obstacle avoidance sensors don't work they will not come on at all they'll be off all the time so in sports mode be super careful in normal mode and in cine mode they work all the time and it's down to you to change those options like we talked about at the start of the video on the main screen here in album you can see everything that you've filmed everything that you've recorded and these are the low res previews and you'll be able to look at the videos you'll be able to zoom into photos all through there and then actually take it out of the sd card out of your drone and then get editing so i hope you enjoyed that guys and that was helpful you probably have to watch this a few times but those are the settings before you go out and fly in and i'm going to be doing lots more videos showing you cinematic moves how to get the best out of this mini 3 pro so i hope you enjoyed that i think we all need to lie down now make sure you subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye.